In this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a professional looking magazine cover using Adobe Photoshop. Now, as you can see on your screen, we have an example of what our finished product is roughly going to look like today. Uh, there will be a few little tweaks and changes here and there, but this will give you a general idea of what we are working towards. Now, this video, um, oh, sorry, this tutorial is fairly long, so I will split it up into a few different videos just to um, give you a little break in between sections. And the final thing we need to do before we get started today is just download this little barcode and the picture of Lockie Neal, the footy player there, that we're going to use in our design today. So you've got this barcode, which will be on the virtual library, along with this picture of Lockie Neal. Okay, so to get started, jump on over to Photoshop, and I want you to click Create New on the left-hand side. Go up the top to the Print templates and choose the A4 template so you've got a 210 by 297 millimeter document. Your resolution should be set to 300 pixels per inch and your color mode should be flicked over to CMYK color. Click create when you're good to go and you'll get your empty white canvas on the screen. Just press Control 0 so it just um, brings it back a little bit to full size. Now the first thing I'd like to do today is put in the picture of Lockie Neal. So to do that, we need to go to File and Open, and open up that picture that we just downloaded from the virtual library. There's a few ways we can cut Lockie Neal out. You could use the Quick Selection tool if you wanted to, but because we have a pretty busy background, and I think it might be a little bit confusing to Photoshop uh, for Photoshop to separate Lockie Neal from the background, I'm going to use the Polygonal Lasso tool to cut Lockie Neal out today. Now, I'm going to zoom in here. Just press Control plus to zoom in or Control minus to zoom out. And I'm going to start with his hair up the top here. I'm going to start cutting around his hair and then I'm going to go all the way around his body and then back to the start. So we have this perfect selection of Lockie Neal. So to do this, you've seen it before with the fruit faces, but we'll do it again. We're going to start in one position by clicking just near the edge of his hair. And when you move your mouse around, you've got a line now that's following your mouse cursor. What we need to do is just carefully go click, click, click. Don't worry about these stray bits of hair, we can chop them off, so just go past them. We just go click, click, click. I'm just going to go past all the buffy stuff. And I'm clicking very carefully and slowly just around his hair. When you get to his ears, just stay inside his ears a tiny little bit. If you go outside his body or his ears or whatever, it'll look a little bit funny. So stay just inside when we're cutting him out. Okay, so very carefully going around and chopping him out. I'll speed this part of the video up as I go around. Um, and then I'll see you at the end of my cut and we'll go and move him into our document. All right, so we're back at the start now. When you get back to the starting point, just click on that starting point and it should give you um, your marching ants or your marquee that comes around Lockie Neal's body. Don't worry about this bit of water in here. We're going to get rid of that later on, but we should have this nice um, perfect cut or marquee around Lockie Neal now. Once you've got that looking good, go up to edit and cut him out and go back to your first tab here and paste him in. Now he comes out fairly small, so you will need to grab your move tool from your toolbox Make sure your Show Transform Controls button is turned on and hold Shift. Drag from a corner so that he doesn't lose his um, proportion. He needs to stay in proportion so he doesn't look deformed. And make him look fairly big. Okay, probably looking for that size there for now. You can make him bigger and smaller a little bit later on, uh, depending on how we want to go. But press the tick at the top when you're done, and that will just bring him back to high quality. And you can see you've got a fairly good looking cut around his body. Now, to get this water out of the way, it's pretty much the same as what we did before. Grab your polygonal lasso tool and simply click around just on the inside of his um, shirt there and on his arm. And we're just going to delete this section inside here. So just give me a sec while we get around here. You might have to give him a little bit of a haircut under the arms there. It's okay. Once you've got that selection, um, you should be able to just press delete and it will go away. If it doesn't, you might need to go over to your layers panel here and make sure you've got layer one selected. I might even rename that to Lockie Neal now, so you know who it is. 
And once you've selected that layer, whoops, you should be able to just press delete and that will disappear. Now to get rid of this marquee or the marching ants, just go to select up the top and press deselect. And if we press control zero to zoom back out, we have a fairly good um, looking cut. Now using the move tool, you want to move him down to the bottom of the page because he's obviously been amputated at the waist. We don't want it to look like he's missing his legs or anything. So we need to position him at the bottom of the page. If we go back and look at the example, I actually made him quite big and just chopped off some of his arm here. So what I'm going to do now is just resize him so that he fills up a good chunk of the page. So we're probably looking at something about that size. Okay, so that's our model on the cover already. Next thing you would probably want to do is put the background in. And the background I'm going to use today are the colors of the Brisbane line. So we're going to use this maroon, the blue, and the goldy colors. So I'm going to make a gradient. Now, if you don't know what a gradient is, that's basically when colors, or more than one color, fades in to another color. So two or more colors fading into each other. And in your toolbox on the left-hand side, you've got a gradient tool. This one just here. If you select it, you've got a little color box at the top here that I want you to click on. This is where you get to choose what colors you'd like to include in your gradient. So the first color that I'm going to include in my gradient is the maroon color. And to bring that in, I've currently got blue and white. So I'm going to click on this little, I guess it looks like a little padlock or a little house where the color blue is. If I click on that, it selects that color. If I double click on it, it lets me change that color. So double click on it and I want you to come over to Lock and Eel's shirt and you can see you've got this little eyedropper icon where your mouse cursor is. If you just select any reddish kind of color in his shirt, you've selected that color now to include in your gradient. So just click on OK on your color picker box and you've now got the first color of your gradient in there. Now at the other end of the scale, what I want to put in is the blue color in his jersey. So if we double click on this little padlock and go over to his jersey and select one of the bluey kind of colors, you'll see your color picker has now picked up that blue out of his jersey and we can click on OK. And we've now got the maroon and the blue in his jersey. Last thing I want to do, if you click somewhere along the bottom of this, um, I guess it's the gradient color picker here, a little, a little padlock will appear. Okay, so we've now got three padlocks. Move this one into location 50%. So you can see your location down the bottom here. You can even type in 50% if you want. That just puts it right in the middle of our current gradient. And if you double click on this little padlock, you can go and click on the gold part of either his jersey up here or even on the line. Probably going to go his jersey. It's just a little bit less of a red tinge. And click OK. And there's your gradients. We've got the maroon that fades into the yellow or gold, and then that fades into the blue. Click on OK, and all you need to do now is go back to your layers, and on this background layer, click in the top left-hand corner and drag down to the near the bottom right-hand corner and let go, and there's your background. Okay, so that was the gradient tool. From our toolbox on the left-hand side of the page, we picked our color at the top, and simply clicked and dragged down from the top left to the bottom right hand corner. That gives us a diagonal gradient with those three colors. And I think that looks pretty good. Okay, so I don't need to change anything else there. Oh yeah, well make sure you uh, clicked on the background layer too when you did that, otherwise um, probably won't work properly. Now the next thing I wanna do is I wanna bring in the barcode, which is just gonna be positioned in the bottom left hand corner of the page out of the way. Now the barcode, this one here and all we need to do is pick it up drag it over to Photoshop and drop it in okay now it comes out behind Lockie Neal which means we have an issue with our layers what we want to do is move this barcode up above Lockie Neal so we can see it clearly and using our move tool we should be able to hold shift and transform that shape into something nice and small remember barcodes shouldn't um, distract the viewer from what's on the front cover of the magazine so make it nice and small down the bottom left there and zooming in on that barcode we want to add a little bit of text I know it's going to be hard to see but basically go and grab your type tool and I'm just going to stick with a simple font so Franklin Gothic Demi will do me 
going to go with black. Size 12 to start with, but I'm sure we're going to have to resize that in a minute. And I'm going to write in the price of the magazine. This is one of the things you need to see on the front of a magazine cover. So 595 looks good. Put a couple of spaces and I might write issue 23. It's always good to know the issue number of the magazine as well. So making that nice and small, I've gone into size 6. I'm just going to position that just above the barcode, like so. Okay, um, barcode's a little bit big down the bottom here, so feel free to grab this rectangle marquee tool. If you hover over, oh sorry, click and drag over the top of that white section and press delete. Actually, we need to go back to our layers and select the barcode layer. Now we can press delete. Oh, no, it's not going to let us do that. Let's just leave it. Okay, it's going to be too much mucking around. I can get rid of that if I want to, but I'm just going to leave it as is. That's our barcode done. Okay, so we've got price, issue number, barcode. Next thing that I would like to include in the magazine cover is a heading. So that's the name of our magazine. So at the top here, I've got Inside Football. And I've got this little slogan too, Australia's number one AFL magazine. So let's get that in. I'm going to grab my type tool. And before I start typing, I'm going to change my font to something a bit thicker. So I'm going to stick with the Franklin font. And I'm going to go Franklin Gothic Heavy. We've got Heavy Regular, which should look the part. And if we click in capital letters, I'm going to write inside. Obviously I need to make that a lot bigger. Start with size 72 for now, and then we'll go from there. Uh, that looks pretty good. One thing I might change, I don't know if you're going to have this set up or not on yours. We've got this thing called tracking here. So we've got this character panel where you can find the tracking. If you can't see the character panel, again, you can go to your window menu and select character. Where it's got VA and left and right arrows near it, mine's currently set to 50. And that puts a little bit of space between each letter. The bigger that number, the bigger the space between each letter. That's the tracking. I want that set to zero because I don't really want too much space between my letters. So that's how it should be looking for now. It doesn't matter what color it is yet. Black's fine. Whatever color you've got is fine. We're about to change it anyway. What we're going to do is put a gradient on this as well. So you've got two colors in our font that fade into one another. To do that, you need to go over to your layers panel here and look for the layer that says inside. And in this empty space next to it, just double click your mouse and a box will come up. This is your layer style box where you can style up the layer. First thing you want to do is go to drop shadow. And we're going to put a little drop shadow on this text. Okay, the drop shadow is going to have a few settings changed. We're going to change the opacity to 55%, which makes the shadow a little bit transparent. The distance is going to be set to 20 pixels. The size is going to be set to 10 pixels. Make sure the spread there is 0%. And the angle that this drop shadow falls out at is going to be 130 degrees. Okay, so it comes from the top left and the shadow appears towards the bottom right. And the other thing we need to do is click over here on Gradient Overlay. And what we're going to do is click on the Gradient box here. And we're going to put in a... Um, Two grey colours basically, so on the left hand side, if you double click your mouse, we're just going to bring the colour down to, I oh, don't know, like a mid kind of grey. That doesn't look probably too bad about there. And then at the other end of the scale, I'm going to make it fairly light, so almost white, a very, very light grey. Like that will probably look good. Uh, so if we click OK, I think we're looking pretty good. So you can see, if you check this preview box here, you can get a preview of what it's going to look like. So we've got this slight gradient where it goes from a mid kind of grey down to a very, very light grey. And we've got a little drop shadow underneath it. If you check the boxes next to the gradient overlay and the drop shadow, it will turn them on and off. So you can see the difference each of those effects make to the text. But I'm pretty happy with that, so I'm going to click on OK. Now the second part of our um, title will say Football. So I'm just going to copy this text and paste it in. So I've now got two copies. Now this bottom one, if you just grab your type tool again from your toolbox, you should be able to highlight it. And I want you to write football in capital letters. And this time I'm going to make it a lot bigger. I'm going 
to try size 120. We might even go a bit bigger than that. We'll see. Oh no, that isn't too bad. It's probably even a bit too big. So let's just drop that down a little bit more. About 115 looks good on mine. You can do whatever you want. Now it's going to go over his head here, but that's fine for the moment. We're just going to play around with it first and then we'll get it um, looking good once we're finished um, playing with it. So inside football, what I'm going to get you to do is go over to the layers panel that we should still have open over here on the right. Find where it says football and just double click in this empty space next to the word football, which will bring up our layer style box again. Go down and click on Gradient Overlay, and what I want you to do is change the angle of this um, gradient. It's currently at minus 90. I'm going to change it to 90 degrees. So it flips it around. And I think that looks pretty good, so I'm just going to click on OK. That's the only effect I really wanted to change there. Um, now, what I'm going to do is put Lockie Neal above the word football. So here's Lockie Neal's picture down here. I'm going to drag that up to the very top layer. In magazines it's okay to have the model cut off some of the title at the top. Okay, so that's what I'm doing here. Most people will still know that that says football behind his head. You might have also noticed as I move Lockie Neal up top and hid the barcode. We do need to see that barcode, so you're just going to have to drag that barcode up to the top. And also the text that went with it, so the price and the issue number. Let's put that above Lockie Neal as well, so they come back to the top layer. Alright, so that's not looking too bad. I might even make him just a little bit smaller so we can start to see the shape of the B and the A in football. Not too bad. Alright, and um, the last thing I might put in here is that little slogan I was talking about for, before that says Australia's number one football magazine. It's going to go in small letters just up the top here. So grabbing our type tool again, let's just click and we'll write that in in capitals. Austra oops, Australia's number one football, actually you might say AFL. Number one AFL magazine. Now highlighting that, we can turn the size up a bit. Let's go about, I'm going to go about 10 point. I'm going to move that down about here, so it's level with the end of that L there. Now I'm going to double click on that layer that says Australia's Magazine over here. I need to get the layer style up and we're going to put a drop shadow back on it. Now the drop shadow is going to be a little bit different to what we had before in terms of the distance down to 5 pixels and the size down to 5 pixels as well. Whoops, I shouldn't have closed that yet. Um, I'll just go back to those effects. As well as the drop shadow, we also want to put the gradient overlay back on it. And it's pretty good as it is there, I think. Um, so if you wanted, you could just lighten it a little bit. So it's a little bit easier to read. Yeah, it doesn't look too bad. So feel free to play with that gradient overlay a little bit just to make it look nice. Click OK. Zooming out out of full screen. That is how we are looking so far, and I think that looks pretty good. If we just go and look at the example we had, yeah, that's not too bad. So I might give you a rest here now, and uh, that's the first 20 minutes of the tutorial done. We'll come back in a moment, and we'll start adding a bit more to our magazine cover in the second video. I'll see you then.